Namaste Bukulians. I hope that each and every one of you are very fine and fit at home. Dear students, today we are going to start second chapter of geography. Land, soil, water, natural vegetation and wildlife resources. Dear students, this chapter we are going to begin with a small story of Mamba and Peters. Let us come to know the differentiate between the lifestyle of Mamba and Peter. Mamba lives in Tanzania, a place in Africa where she lives a very hard life. Mamba gets up early morning and she go a very far away place to fetch a water written back after long hours then she helps her mother after that she joins her brothers to take care of their shipyards no they are having cattle like sheep and they graze their sheep in that area they are having a very small plot of land and father is toiling hard he is working very hard and barely able to grow beans and maize two kind of crops dear students the family is living a very hard life and the food which is grown by mamba's parents is not sufficient for the entire year now next you see the life of peter peter lives in a very far away place in new zealand and the lifestyle of peters is you can say much better than mamba in which way because peter goes to school every day when he come back he sees the factory of his uncle because they are having a very small industry of wool industry and after that he watches his uncle he does agricultural work there and they grow different kind of crops and the crops which are grown it means the agriculture which is grown by peter's parents is in scientific way that shows that the life is much luxurious of peter comparison to mama what do you think what is the differentiate between the life of mamba and peters that is because of the differentiate in the climatic condition of both the places second thing is quality of soil if you see the quality of soil in africa is not so good quality and new zealand much better quality that is also the main differentiate between the lifestyle of peter and mamba dear students now let us come to the point of land you might be knowing we lives it means the population of the world lives on the 30% surface of the land area and land is renewable resource which is used for different purposes some of the areas of the world are habitable and some are inhabitable where the life possibility is not there dear students here you see if you see the entire surface of the earth there are three things are generally seen what do we see these three things these three things are the first thing is land what do we see land land plateaus and third thing is mountains my dear students almost 30% surface of the earth is land where 90% population of the world lives it means these areas are mostly densely populated area comparison to the plateaus and mountains if you see 
the globe in the globe you will see these areas the areas of mountain and areas of plateaus are sparsely populated less populated why because what do we see here climatic conditions are not so much favorable comparison to land now you see example if you take a example of india in india there are different physical features are there himalayas mountains are there northern indian plains are there the great indian desert the plateaus which is called deccan plateau two group of islands andaman and nicobar lakshadweep islands are there dear students if you see plain areas of india which is called northern indian plains these areas are densely populated because in these areas river flows ganga river indus river brahmaputra river that is why these areas are very much suitable for agriculture land is leveled here land is very fertile in these areas and agriculture is easily done in this area water sources are easily available and it is very easy to lay down the network of railways and as well as of roadways comparison to the plateau areas and mountain areas other side if you see the lifestyle of the people who are living in the plateau areas and mountain areas here sparse population lives less population lives my dear students if i take an example of the some of the state of india uttar pradesh it is mostly a densely populated state of india region because it comes under plain areas bihar haryana punjab and other side if you take an example of the states of india which lies in the mountain areas if you take an example of assam sikkim arunachal pradesh in these areas population is very less reason because climatic conditions are not so much favorable in these areas not so easy to grow crops in these areas not so easy to lay down the network of railways and as well as roadways this is land use pattern now let us see what are known as land use patterns first of all let us come to know what is land use land is used for various purposes land is used for agriculture land is used for industries land is used for farming it is used for construction of construction of houses and for various purposes land is used for various purposes land is used for agriculture land is used for making roads land is used for construction of houses for making hotels for various purposes this entire things are known as land use patterns and land use patterns are various in the various parts of the world dear students in the world land is used for agriculture you can say crop land for farming for forestry for various purposes 57% land is used in india for agriculture it is highest in all over the world 57 percentage and if you see the land under the forest area it is in japan 67 percentage area in japan it is used for forest and in india it is used for crop land and even in the same way australia for pasture land it is used maximum 58 percentage and for other purposes canada is leading country in the world so it means it shows that land is used for the different purposes my dear students if we talk about the types of lands there are two types are there it has been categorized in the two types 
one is known as individual land first is individual land and second is known as community land two types are there the land which is owned by individual person is known as individual land suppose a farmer's farm farmer's house a factory of an individual person is individual land and when land is used for community purpose land is not owned by single person it is owned by community for example you can take an example of you can take an example of the parks if you see the parks in the areas of cities or even in the rural areas these are owned by the community not by any individual person so this is the land use patterns and as well as types of lands as you have seen here individual lands and community land my dear students nowadays what do we see nowadays it is generally seen the land is degraded why the land is degraded because what do we see nowadays because of this mining areas because of mining activities and second thing is that nowadays farmers especially in haryana punjab western part of uttar pradesh they cultivate their farms with the help of as five seeds they uses maximum chemicals and fertilizers because of this reason land is turned into the barren land or land is degraded or you can say because of over irrigation punjab and haryana especially in punjab this is a major problem that land is over irrigated this is also one of the reason for land degradation not only these my dear students several reasons are there several factors are there if you see in industry areas if you see in the factory areas there also same problem take place where our factories are there they throw their waste is garbage they scatter that garbage in the nearby areas of the industry and the land is polluted land is degraded but my dear students we need to avoid these activities suppose mining areas where our pit holes are there after extraction those pit holes should be closed down and we need to plant more and more trees dear students in the land use patterns we came to know that land under forest is maximum in all over the world in japan that is 67 percentage if if you compare with india and japan in india only 24.01 percent land is under forest areas this is a huge gap between india and japan we need to stop this it means we need to stop cutting of trees what do we do we have cut a large number of trees nowadays we need to stop these activities we need to plant more and more trees every year 5th of june which is celebrated as world environment day we need to plant more and more trees so that we can protect the environment and we can get fresh air from this environment so dear students in this way the land is used for various purposes okay and the second thing which we have discussed is individual it means the type of land individual land and the community land thereafter we discussed that what are the factors for the land division let us come to know factors responsible for land degradation for your students there are several factors are there which are responsible for degradation of land let us discuss about them one by one number one factor is mining second is deforestation
थर्ड वन इज ओवर इरिगेशन फोर्थ वन इज लैंड साइड लैंड साइड ऑफ द रीजन फिफ्थ वन इज वेस्ट ऑफ ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज तो दीज आर द वेरियस फैक्टर्स विच आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर लैंड डेग्रेडेशन टूडे माइनिंग इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द फैक्टर विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द लैंड डेग्रेडेशन डिफॉरेस्टेशन ऑल्सो इज वन ऑफ द फैक्टर विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर लैंड डिग्रेडेशन लैंड इज डिग्रेडेड नाउ डेज बिकॉज ए लार्ज नंबर ऑफ ट्रीज आर कट डाउन दिस लीड टू द डिफॉरेस्टेशन ओवर इरीगेशन एज आई हैव जस्ट टोल्ड यू अबाउट ओवर इरीगेशन वट जनरली सीन इन पंजाब इन पंजाब फार्मर्स इरीगेट their fields and many times it happens they over irrigate their fields it also leads to the degradation of land and next reason is landslide it is also one of the major factor which is responsible for land degradation you know the areas which receive continuously rainfall frequent rainfall heavy rainfall in these areas landslide takes place and that are also one of the factor for the land degradation and next is waste of industries you know we might have seen the wastage which is used in the industry suppose during the time of manufacturing in the manufacturing process when they make iron from the iron ore in that process whatever effluents are there whatever waste ingredients are there those are scattered those are thrown in the nearby areas which are near to the industry and this is also one of the reason which leads to the land degradation so my dear students these are the common factors which are responsible for the land degradation this is enough for today's lecture in the next next lecture we will discuss we will discuss that how can we avoid this degradation of the land this is very important for us to know how can we avoid land degradation in the next video of this chapter land soil water natural vegetation and wild life resources we will discuss what are the factors which are helpful to avoid land degradation and we will discuss about water one of the natural resource natural vegetation and wildlife resources till then goodbye